I'll turn it over to you, Beth. So it's all yours. All right. All right. Share screen here. Whoops. Whoops. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Um, there we go. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about founding and the women who founded their organization and um, how they got all this rolling. So, yeah. Um, your screen isn't shared. Are you wanting it to be is shared? It, is it not sharing? No. I, it was, it's, I thought it was, whoops. That's okay. Let's see, because Here, I'm sorry. No, you're good. It's technology. We're all <laughs> making it work. Well, you know, and also the idiot at the control. Let's see. Do you see the green button at the bottom? Yeah, no, I've got the green button. It's just that the presentation keeps disappearing on me. Okay. So let me just. I've got it. Okay, there we are. Share screen. Now, there you are. Okay. So, there we are. Yes, there we go. Got it? Yep. All right. Okay. Everybody see that? Yes. All right. So we are going to talk about some extraordinary members and this brand new chapter that we're writing in Tridelta's history at Sacred Heart. So in the fall of 1888, uh, you have two senior students who were friends um, Sarah Ida Shaw and Eleanor Dorcas Pond. Um, they had been discussing just kind of the situation with the three Greek groups, the sororities that were on campus there at Boston University. Um, Sarah and Eleanor had both been approached by the other groups, but they didn't quite feel that fit, you know, that that click that you get when, when you know the group's right. Um, and so they were talking and they thought, you know, why don't we start a group of our own? Um, and, you know, you, you know how the, they wanted their society to, uh, as Sarah stated it, one that she'll be kind of like to all and think more of a girl's inner self and character than of her personal appearance. That is a pretty extraordinary foundation to build an organization on. So Eleanor and Sarah, two really different backgrounds. Sarah was an only child. Her dad was a builder. Her mother was an Irish immigrant who came to America with her younger sister. Sarah attended girls Latin school in Boston um, not long after it opened. This was a pretty extraordinary school for its time. It was at the time one of the only women's preparatory, college preparatory schools uh, in Boston. And um, so Sarah got a remarkable education there for young women at the time. And she had wanted to attend Wellesley. Um, 
but her mother became seriously ill. And because her tra father traveled a lot, uh, she, Sarah, needed to stay close to home. So she decided to go to Boston University. Her friend Eleanor was an orphan. Um, Eleanor had lost both of her parents by the time she was 12 years old. Um, she went to live with a family friend who raised her and who she called aunt. Um, she attended Medway High School in Medway, Massachusetts and graduated at the top of her class. Um, she was attending Boston University on scholarship. Sarah was um, a classical scholar. She, um, her education had included learning Greek and Latin, but she was also familiar with Sanskrit. She was, um, had studied ancient cultures and mythology and was very fascinated by all of that. She was also um, very good at mathematics and geometry. Um, as well as astronomy. And she worked out all the original plans, very intricate plans for our um, ritual, for our badges, for our emblem. She wrote the constitutions. All of this, we were pretty much created as a whole. Um, now, Eleanor, was also a brilliant student. She uh, was a lot more down to earth, a little bit more laid back. She was, she was that friend that you have that always makes you smile. And um, so the two friends worked out their plans for the organization and Eleanor was kind of the more practical of the two when Sarah came up with this fabulous idea for these very elaborate badges with all these jewels. Uh, Eleanor goes, no, nobody's going to be able to afford that. Just let's, let's keep it simple. Uh, both of them commuted via this, um, this little tram train that was pulled by horses into Boston. That was how they got to school. And so as they're doing the plans for the organization, they're meeting frequently to go over the latest ideas they've come up with. And they often met in the women's study uh, in the liberal arts building. Um, it was nicknamed the Parthenon for that marble sculpture of Athena that's over the fireplace. And um, so that when they worked this out, they were sitting on these cushions at the back of the room there because Sarah talks about sitting back there and then making their plans. So Tridelta was really the first sorority to kind of been founded complete with ritual, symbolism, the emblems, down to our constitution and bylaws all the plans for ritual, everything, you know, how we, everything would be set up. Um, and the two se seniors finished their plans just before the Thanksgiving recess. Then one final meeting in the philological library at the top of the liberal arts building. So they went over everything one last time. And then um, as Sarah said, they embraced each other and said, Tridelta is founded. So after they left, they were getting ready to head home for the, for the Thanksgiving holidays. And, you know, it's November, so it's getting dark. And according to Sarah, there was a crescent moon out. And as they're talking, they realize that, you know, the other girls will be going through initiation, but they wouldn't. So what would hold them, what would hold Sarah and Eleanor. So in the shadow of Park Street Church, they swore fealty to Tridelta before they headed off 
for the holidays. So they get back from the holidays and now is the time to get to work. Now they've got to start recruiting people for their new organization. So what do you do when you have this great idea that you're trying to recruit people to do? The first thing you do is go to your friends, right? And get them involved. So that's what they did. The first prospective member was uh, Florence Stewart, who was a high school friend of Eleanor's. And I don't know if you can see the bar comes down on the side, but both Eleanor and um, Florence Stewart are listed on the high school graduates. They were the two top students in their class um, when they graduated. Florence, again, you know, like, like Eleanor was easygoing. She was an, again, a very extraordinary student. Um, and she was, she was ready to go. She was, she jumped right in on it. Um, their friend Bell Breed was not quite so quick to join their company. Um, she was very religious and had very strong convictions and wasn't quite sure how she felt about joining a sorority until they talked to her about the values that Tri-Delta was built on and she, she agreed to join the membership. Junior Emily Allen, who went on to be our first Trident editor, um, worked with Sarah and Eleanor on the details for the initiation service to get the 14 members that they had collected to join this, the organization. And on January 15th, after they were coming back from um, the holiday break, they started initiating everybody. And the last, they did it in three initiations and the last one they did at um, Emily's boarding house, which the building is still there when we were doing the 125th, we actually, we found the address and it was all still there. Um, so they, they did this in Emily's room in the boarding house and then they took over the landlady's kitchen that night to fix themselves a banquet to celebrate. This was the first badge that Sarah had created. And you can see it's still the stars and crescent that we all wear. Um, but she, trying to recruit members, she wanted to keep it, they wanted to keep it really simple and inexpensive. And so she had the jeweler create these by rolling out the gold very, very thin. And you can see they're, they're very thin and it's saying my connection is unstable. So if I go away, I'm, let me know. Um, Anyway, so she was able to have two dozen of these made for $1.25. They tried to keep the cost down because they didn't want anybody not to be able to join Tri-Delta because they couldn't afford the badge. And so the following Monday after the initiation, um, 18 members of the new organization proudly displayed their new membership badges on campus. By May, when this photo was taken, there were 21 members. And this was an unusually large group on campus, but they were looking to the future and they were trying to make sure they had, uh, after the seniors graduated, they had enough members to continue the group. Okay, now these are pages from the original minutes of Alpha Chapter. And I don't know if you can see, those are the signatures of the four that include the four founders. It's the first seven members who are initiated and uh, includes the four founders, Sarah, Eleanor, and Isabel and Florence. And it is part of this wonderful book that has all the minutes of the first meetings 
of Alpha Chapter so we can kind of see how the chapter grew over the years. And then behind that, you see the little manuscript that's behind it? That was a history of Tri-Delta that Sarah Ida Shaw wrote out by hand. Um, she was intending to write our first history book, but she never quite got that far. And uh, Bessie Leach Pretty ended up writing the history book and using the manuscript that Sarah had written. But so much of what we know about the founding comes from this manuscript. And I don't know if you saw um, when we started the kindness campaign, there was there's a script to that that said, let us found uh, a society that is kind of like to all that we pulled that out of that. And that is actually in Sarah Adeshaw's handwriting that we used for the campaign. So where to go from there? Tridelta was fortunate enough um, that a lot of its early growth we can uh, is due to two women, both Sarah Ida Shaw and Etta Mae Budd. This is Etta Mae, and she graduated from Iowa State in 1882 and came to Boston to study art at the uh, Boston Art Museum. She was staying at the YWCA and got to know um, several of the Tridelta's who lived there that had been, just been initiated and was really intrigued by them talking about this new organization that had just been formed. Um, it turns out that she had founded a sorority at Iowa State and her sorority had recently agreed to join up with uh, another organization at Simpson. So while she was there, she met with Sarah Ida Shaw and with the other members of Alpha and was so impressed with Tridelta. She said, why don't y'all come be a part of my organization? And Sarah said, well, why don't your two organizations join us? And that's what they ended up doing. Um, the first one to be charted, chartered was Simpson in April of 1889. This was within the first year of our existence. We're, we're already opening other chapters. Iowa State was a little bit more complicated because of things that were going on on campus. They actually didn't uh, get installed until 1890 and then had to close and then reopened again. Um, this was Simpson's pledge when they joined Tridelta and the members who did that. Um, Sarah was responsible for the next chapter, uh, Epsilon at Knox. Um, she had created a career for herself because she was so good at writing ritual and writing constitutions and bylaws and, and all the symbolism. She decided to make it her career and she worked as a consultant to other groups. People came to her um, for help. Um, she also wrote a guidebook the sorority handbook, um, which was not only a guidebook that listed, you know, the histories, the groups and all their histories and everything. It was also a best practices guide. You know, this is how you run a sorority. This is what you do to make it successful. And here's why. Um, but in doing that, she made a lot of contacts across the country and a lot of our early extension was through her contacts in the Greek world. Um, she would find out that there was an organization, a local organization that wanted to go national. And so we were able to, that was how we got Knox was from uh, a friend she had on campus who worked on campus who knew of a local group. And, and then, <clears throat> The next four years, uh, we we'll see the installation of chapters at Iowa State and Adrian. That's Bessie Leach Pretty um, there in that picture of Adrian. Uh, St. Lawrence, Cincinnati, 
and Vermont. By 1900, we had chapters in the South and on the Pacific Coast, which is pretty remarkable when you consider these women were doing this by train. By 1913, we had chapters in 30 states. Today, we have 141 active chapters and more than 240,000 collegiate and alumni members. Things have changed since the days of Sarah and Eleanor penning those documents in the Parthenon at Boston University. But the timeless values that they based our organization on have not changed. And we carry these ideals with us outside our sisterhood and remember it in relationships, not only with our Tri-Delta sisters, but with our friends, with our family, with our co coworkers and colleagues, um, living our ritual. So you are the next milestone in Tri-Delta's history. Your chapter is being formed in the middle of a pandemic and you've not only make it, made it work, you've set the bar for other chapters that will come uh, after you. Um, you know, Tri-Delta, one of the things about, that I have written about a lot since March is resiliency and how Tri-Delta has in those historic moments, um, World War I, uh, the Spanish flu, how we have managed to take this bad time and make it work. And, um, you know, you are, you are part of that. Um, and I know these, these letters that you're writing, these reflections that you're writing are a gift and they're going to go every chapter and try Delta has the, let me stop the share here. Right. There we go. Has this little box and this one happens to be Butler because I was pulling some information for um, their redoing their house and I was pulling some old pictures. So it has photos, it has documents, it has it has installation photos. And lots and lots of history. Oh, here it is. These were some really, really early photos of when the chapter was installed. That's in Butler's book. The reflections that you write are going to be the things that people will celebrate when they come 25, 50 years now, when you're planning those big celebrations, they're gonna look at those and go, isn't this remarkable? They formed this chapter in the middle of a pandemic. And here's, here's the women who were able to do that. Um, so it's a gift, not only for your chapter, but for Tri-Delta as we go back and people, someone like me, who's gonna come write about how did Tri-Delta deal with life in a pandemic. Um, we had this remarkable chapter at Sacred Heart and look what they did. And here are their thoughts of going through this. Um, so it's not just a gift to your chapter, it's a gift to Tri-Delta. And it's also kind of a gift to yourself. And 
Um, thank you for writing those and sending those in and we'll look forward to seeing them. Okay, so I've been talking a lot. It, I'm open for questions now. Anybody? Did anyone have a favorite part of the story? I liked seeing like the pictures from the founding of the first, or not the first, sorry, the like the one you just showed us um, from that other college. That cool. it's, it's really amazing. We have, there's such a variance between chapters. I have some chapters where I have, you know, like with Butler, I have some lovely materials and then some I don't. And, you know, it, it's always great to have those when those occasions come up. Or if we're looking for photos for something that we're, uh, we're gonna be uh, publishing, a lot of times we wanna pull historic photos. Anything else? I also had a question. Um, where did you go to college? I don't know if you I, told us that or not. Oh, I guess I didn't. Um, <laughs> I went to TCU, Texas Christian in Fort Worth. Beth, I didn't know that Tri Delta, like at the beginning, like other organizations joined with Tri Delta to create it. I thought that was really cool. That was something I didn't know. Yeah, they were. Now they weren't national groups at that point, but they were they were local groups. And um, you know, at in our earlier days, we we do new chapters one or two ways. We would go in and start from scratch, like we are at Sacred Heart, or there might be a local group. Um, you know, they're they're a one of a kind group. And they're not affiliated with anybody. They're just local to that campus. And, but they want to go national. Now, what's really fascinating is when you find uh, we have pieces of jewelry and badges from the earlier groups that they were. Um, one of my colleagues, the fraternity and sorority archivists get together from time to time. And one of our colleagues is um, trying to track down all those local groups and see from our collections, do you have any of their jewelry? Do you have any of their, you know, uh, anything about their history or anything? So we're fortunate we have a lot of that. So when I was, I was at Alpha Chapter and when I was there, if I remember correctly, our president, chapter president, she certainly wore a very old pin. I think it might have been Sarah Ida Shaw's. Is that still no. the case? Do the presidents still wear the old pins? Um, for a long time, they did wear uh, antique badges. It was not Sarah Ida's pin. That's been nope. at executive office. Uh, but it was an antique badge that they had. Um, Big. It was a lot bigger than ours. Yes. Yes. Um, the problem we had, and we also, the... Um, uh, CDCs used to get an oh. badge to wear out on their travels. But can you guess what happened? We mm -hmm. lost a lot of them. And finally looking at the collection going, oh boy, you know, we don't want to lose, you know, we can't replace these. So um, CDCs had their own special badge and um, a lot, it, for the presidents, they have been, um, they have had a special badge created for them as well. I think there are still some chapters that do have an antique badge that has been passed down. Um, anything else? All right, well, thank you, Beth. I'm gonna show everyone, I put together a little slideshow of our alumna and some pictures they submitted, just to give you all some inspiration on maybe some pictures you might want to send in for your chapter folder. So I thought maybe we could show you all some funny pictures. So 
here's some good throwback <laughs> photos um you can see here if you look at this timestamp, it's like from this one says 1988 so it's just really funny to like look back at these old photos like I really enjoyed looking at some of them you can see here like Kaylee one of your advisors this looks like her big little so here's um another one looking like all these jeans it's just really fun to look at these old pictures um and even this wasn't even my chapter but I really enjoyed looking at these things so it's just like so important to keep these memories and make sure that you're documenting these really cute pictures and even scrapbook them like over here you can kind of see a scrapbook that was put together and then even down here in the middle this is Beth Beth you mentioned this was from your big little reveal I think so yeah that was that was the morning of it yeah so just all these really cool memories that you get to keep with you and look back on and reflect on and I'm sure it was um really fun for our alumna to put those together. So I'm thankful you all sent them in and I hope that gives you some inspiration as you all start your chapters folders. So um, yes, I'm really glad you all enjoyed going through that. So thank you, Beth, for your time. I think just the second half, we're gonna just play some music for you all and you can just kind of start journaling and like writing your chapters history and then I'll message in the chat and send an address and then I'll also post an address on Omega One for you all to mail in your items and kind of show you I'll post some instructions on where you can get your postage to mail in so yeah thank you Beth and thank you to we, all of our advisors sorry we're just writing like a reflection like what specifically should we be writing now yeah, you can write whatever you really want to remember from this time period. You can write about why you joined as a founding member. You can write about what it's been like to start during a pandemic. You can write about what Tri Delta means to you. It's just really kind of a moment of reflection for you so that, you know, in 10, 20 years, when someone looks back on your chapter's history, they can think like, wow, I can't believe they did that. And like, this is what it looked like. So. All right, Meredith, do you want to play some music for us? <laughs> 